Kristen. Hey, I'm Scott. Hi, I'm Skylar. And I'm Holden. And we are the, the Dean, Dean team. team. And we are back at Riverbank Zoo because they have renovated a facility we are super excited about. Mm -hmm. It's the Aquarium and Reptile Conservation Center. And it was sponsored by the Boyd Foundation. We're going to go from land to sea and see a bunch of creatures. What do you think? Are y'all ready for an adventure? Let's, Let's go! For some wayfinding, so the new aquarium and reptile conservation center, right when you walk in, you go straight ahead to the blue building, right past the seals. You come right in past the sea lions and the aquarium and reptile conservation center is right there. This gives us some history of the facility, which originally opened in 1989. The rare white alligator arrived in 2006, first successful hatchling of four critically endangered Pan's Bok turtles in 2007. And here it tells you all of the people who have made this expansion possible. In 2011, they hatched five Galapagos tortoises. Two juvenile Komodo dragons arrived in 2012. This is really cool. It says that a green sea turtle was released in Georgetown, South Carolina. 2018, they hatched some leaf-tailed geckos. They received sustainability awards. And then they took in 36 coral colonies. In 2019, major renovation began in 2021. And now we're here in 2023 and it's open. Right next to the conservation center is Tusker, so you can grab a bite to eat. And then just beyond is the ropes course, and that's where Holden wants to go. Hi, buddy. There's so many. This is a 20,000 square foot facility. There are more than 11,000 animals representing over 300 species, and 17 of the species here are endangered. So it's very cool that the center is focused on conservation efforts. We're gonna to get to see how they are protecting coral reefs and protecting geckos and all kinds of land and sea animals. We're gonna start off in the forests and then we head to the desert and then we make our way into the sea. But there are all kinds of reptiles, amphibians, invertebrates, fish, and birds. So let's check it out. This is everything we're gonna to see today. All of these animals, land and sea. What are you most excited for? Warning, there are snakes and also the snakes. We're starting out in the tropical forest and I love all of the trees around that give you the feeling, even the sounds. It sounds like you're walking through a forest. It says tropical forests are home to at least half of the species on Earth. This is how I walk through the rooms when I know there's reptiles. And the first room, a lot of snakes. Just saying. We'll this see in the desert. Do you like them holding? Are they cool? Yeah. There's a, there's a big one right there. Now we are heading woo, into the desert where there's some Quails. wild birds. The coolest thing I learned on here is that deserts are on every continent, even Antarctica. The polar desert is dry and cold. The more you know. It says the juvenile Galapagos tortoises can live for up to a year without eating or drinking anything, basically. Couldn't do it, but they're so cute. Look at all these buddies. He was following my finger. This little lizard must be tricky. I wonder how many times he got out before they put up those little plastic divider bits. He has eight These ones are best friends, and then this guy's like chilling over by the water. What's in there? Snake. What's in this next room, Holdy? Still a lot of snakes everywhere. A lot of snakes? All right. Yes. There's some animals in the nursery. Hi, bud. This tells you what is in here. So there are some geckos and so a viper, an eight-month-old viper. Look. It's a reptile incubator. 
Do you think that they're actually making dinosaurs in there? Probably, yeah. Uh, very tiny dinosaurs. Scott found the mossy frog. Oh! It looks very mossy. It's very mossy back there. They're hard to spot, these little buddies. This guy's tiny but has long legs and he just moved. Do you see? There's one he coming went to say hello to you? Oh! Oh, they're all coming up to say hello. similar. It's just kind of relocating some of the stuff. We didn't, uh, the anaconda had moved. We didn't see the alligator in the previous room. But then in this place where the snakes are, it, and then from here on, it seems very, very similar. We made it to the land of no snakes. are less than 1% of ocean habitats and among the most biologically diverse places on Earth. The corals in their care help preserve genetic diversity and help in future restoration efforts on the Florida Reef Tract. It says some ingredients in sunscreen are harmful to coral, so you can choose reef safe sunscreen. Coral reef animals are the source of new medicines being developed to treat cancer and other diseases. And the value of coral reefs to fisheries is more than $100 million a year. tanks in the ocean area where the animals are not here yet. It says unexpected delays and they are coming soon. When this octopus gets here, it's going to be named Susan in honor of Mrs. Boyd's favorite animal. Other than the octopus, the other things missing are some anemone anemones, anemones. Other than the octopus, the other things that are missing right now is a cuttlefish, seahorse, some anemones and a wolf eel. I'm really sad this was one of our favorites at the Sea Life Aquarium in Orlando. We'll put a link to that video. Riverbanks is caring for healthy corals. They were rescued from the Florida Reef Tract to prevent infection by a quickly spreading disease. The animal care team provides a simulated natural environment in the lab. They recreate ocean temperature, water motion, salinity, and daylight cycles. Henkel's leaf-tailed geckos, a species vulnerable to extinction in the wild, have thrived at Riverbanks since 1992. There's a lot of buddies back there being taken care of. What are you going to pledge to do? I pledge to share outdoors and my yard with wildlife by leaving animals in their space. That means like when we have a bird nest, we leave it alone. What are you pledging to do? I pledge to avoid purchasing jewelry and souvenirs made from coral and other animals. In temperate forests, the average in Colombia is 90 degrees. So I thought I was looking in the tank with a snapping turtle, but it turns out I was looking at one with a snake swimming in the water. And I think I just had a heart attack. 
Now that we've seen the new conservation center, we're gonna go and check out some of our favorite things around the zoo. We already have a vlog where we do a full tour of the zoo with all of the animals, exhibits, everything that there is to do here. So we'll put a link in the description to that. Today, we're just gonna hang out. It's been drizzling a little bit, it's overcast. So it's actually a really nice day to enjoy the zoo because it is not super hot and I think the animals might be more active. So let's find out. The white rhino habitat is also part of phase one of their bridge to the wild where they are improving the zoo. And so the reptile and aquarium center is also part of phase one. The white rhinos were added in 2020 and they are adorable. This is Gordo, my friend Monkey. Whenever we come to the zoo, we always check out Gorilla Base Camp. It's our favorite thing here. He's like, I see you, I'm not looking at you though. This is who we were just saying hello to, and he is 27 years old. And he's the dominant of this group. I give me a gorilla, that's... this fits my hands and butt perfectly. Fits your hands and butt perfectly, let's see. Oh yeah, that's like your tush size. I just learned that Patrick, who is sleeping right now, is sleeping during the day because he is the only one who goes outside at night when Senzu and the rest of the family come in because two male gorillas at the same time, not such a good situation. So he's like the night watchman. He keeps an eye on things and he is not related to anybody in here. All of the kids are Senzus. My one request. The Sky High Safari. What do you like so much about this? It's like the ropes course from um, the Wonderworks. It is like Wonderworks. Yeah. We'll put a link to that in the description But too. it is way higher. It's a lot higher than Wonderworks. Yeah. And this one is only $5 if you're a member, which is not too bad. Are you going to do it today too? Yeah, I just don't want to slip because it's been raining, so I'm kind of scared. There's a break in the rain, so I think they'll be good to go. At the Sky High Safari, you have to be 48 inches to be able to participate without an adult. Bye! You're already splitting up! Up and up and up. I can hear Holden and Skyla talking up there and Holden's like, Skyla, I have one thing to say. Don't look down. Don't look down. <laughs> I'm like, where's Holden? Oh, right, at the very top. No, thank you. Are you gonna go higher? I did, I went there. Oh, you did? Okay. Now that the rain is let up, there's some traffic jams up there. While we're waiting for the kids, I'm gonna give you a giraffe pop quiz. Okay. How many bones does it take to make a giraffe's neck as long as it is? 13. How many? Seven. I was close. Why are giraffes' tongues so dark? I don't know. I don't know. Hazard a guess. To absorb heat. So that they don't get sunburned. Who knew? Can you touch your tongue to your nose? No, not even close. Let's see you try. <laughs> Hello, you beautiful one. <laughs> that is a baby koala. <gasps> oh my goodness. <laughs> Please look over here at me. Is he eating some leaves? I love how the child is snacking and the adult is napping. That's, that's real life right now. Another one just resting over here. One of the things we're super excited about for phase two of Bridge to the Wild is that they're gonna be adding an animal to the zoo. And what animal are they adding? Orangutans. And they're also going to improve the lion and tiger exhibits. 
<laughs> Are you excited for yeah. some orangutans at the zoo? Yeah. I hope they come soon. We don't know when. One of the things we've always said is, why is there an orangutan statue at the zoo? Because there's no orangutans. Now there will be. There will be. I'm so excited. Besties. Hi. <laughs> You're so cute. What did you think of the renovations to the Aquarium and Reptile Conservation Center? I really liked it. It seemed like the aquarium part was kind of the same, but it did have a bunch of cases that said this animal was coming soon. The desert area was really cool. Same setup, but there was a bunch of new animals, a bunch of new lizards. There was turtles and birds in there too, which was very fun. The snake area had snakes, frogs, a lot of amphibians, and that was all new, so it was really cool. I liked the, um, the snakes. There were a lot to look at. Yeah. Now, I didn't look at any of them, so what was your favorite one you saw? The green... Anaconda? Yeah. Was it huge? Yeah. Ooh. Green anaconda. Were there ones swimming in the water? Yeah. Were there ones in trees? Yeah. We're so happy we got to come and check out the renovations to the Aquarium and Reptile Conservation Center. It's so nice to have it back open. We were happy missing it while yeah. it was closed and especially just in time for the heat of the summer to have an indoor air conditioned spot to go is always phenomenal. It reopened in March, so it's been open for a couple of months now. Mm -hmm. but, it's late May right now. But there are still a few animals that they're waiting on. I'm excited for the octopus to I come. I was really hoping the octopus <laughs> was going to be there by now, but it's all good. I do think we're a little bit spoiled with having Ripley's Aquarium in Myrtle Beach and we just went to Sea Life Aquarium Orlando. Those aquariums have so many interactive elements and I kind of wish that this one did. I wouldn't say we're disappointed with it, no, not but at all. with the renovations I was kind of hoping for some interactive learning elements. Yeah, because you can see behind the scenes. Yes, There's that no, part was cool. Yeah, that, that was really interesting. No touch tanks or pools or anything like that. I do like that it seems like it's all about conservation, telling you how they're helping to save the coral reefs and the geckos and a lot of other animals. Mm -hmm. They said some of the things that you're seeing now were only able to be seen on the backstage tour. So yeah. now we can all see them. So you're kind of getting a glimpse behind the curtain, which is really nice. We've already mentioned some of phase two for Bridge to the Wild, but we're very excited for what's to come at Riverbanks. Orangutans, so excited for those guys. Improving the lion and tiger exhibits. They're also going to have a South Carolina nature preserve. And it says they're gonna have a one of a kind multi-purpose facility on the river. So I don't know if that'll be for events oh, yeah. or yeah. what that will be. So so we will keep you posted as they continue into phase two. There's no dates or anything yet, but phase one is this aquarium and reptile conservation center and the white rhinos. So we're excited to see what's to come in phase two. Thank you so much for coming along with us. And like we said, we have another video with a full tour. Everything in it. All of the exhibits, all of the attractions, everything there is to do, all of the annual pass options. We do have an annual pass. We love it. With the level of annual pass we have, we have 12 tickets that we can give away to friends and family, which is phenomenal. We're also gonna check out the zoo in North Carolina, which we've never been to. So if you have, please leave us some tips in the comments. We're yeah, very excited to, to check that out. So thanks for coming along with us and we'll see you soon. Be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, keep adventuring.